Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS. Um, how's everyone doing today? Hey, good. How you doing? Yo. Good. good. Yeah, we're, we're feeling good today. Uh, yeah. Glad you guys are back again to listening to us, uh, whether you're listening in a vehicle or watching live with us, uh, tuning on to us, tuning into us from various platforms. And before we get into the show and into the nitty gritty, let's let DP uh, Brown uh, show you guys where to find us. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. Make sure that you're going to the site, finding all our, um, you know, links to all our um, different platforms where you can actually download our episodes and listen to them on your favorite podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts, um, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, TuneIn, anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. Make sure that you're following us on your favorite social media platforms um, at Nerdcyclopedia on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, and also send us that feedback. We like hearing you from you, you know, right on Facebook, which we are live on right now, um, and also at nerd, you know, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. All right, gentlemen. Well, without a further ado, uh, we'll, we'll dive right into this. So this is our Carbonite Bounty BS, basically reaction and thoughts of uh, our episode two watch. So for all our listeners and viewers out there, we did a rewatch of episode two, and we're going to basically dive into our topic points as far as what we felt with this movie. And, um, you know, before we went live, kind of funny, we had, we, we didn't want to spare, you know, spoil too many, um, too many clues with ourselves, but we, there are definitely some different directions that we all felt this movie went. So without a further ado, we'll go opposite today. So we'll start with DP. Uh, what were your initial thoughts on the movie? The, the first immediate thought that I had, and I text Hitch, you know, this right as soon as I started watching the movie, mm -hmm. the, it looked a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. Um, the, I, it just, everything just looked good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting up here watching a movie. I'm like, this is night and day compared to what the, you know, episode one looked like. And I'm texting him. I'm sitting up here like, you know, why is that? He texts me back film. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it's, it's digital, you know, the last movie was film. So I'm like, Oh, okay. So yeah, right about that time is probably when technology came up to a point where Lucas was like, okay, I'm just doing everything, you know, digital, you know, transitions and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, my first, that was my first thought was that how smooth the movie looked. My second thing was, again, I'm having fun, you know, um, it's a little darker, you know, than, than what the Phantom Menace was, but I'm still having fun, you know, going through like Anakin's journey and, you know, he's doing some, you know, really suspect stuff in the movie. Uh, another thing I was looking at, um, that this movie definitely gets a lot more political than it, you know, the last movie did and how, um, it re actually eerily relates to a lot of stuff that's going on today. You know, I don't know if, uh, Lucas was a soothsayer, but you know, a lot of the stuff that, you know, that was going on back in 2002, you know, maybe, you know, a lot of people, people couldn't relate, but Man, talking about the different politics and, you know, dictatorships and, you know, um, you know, democracies falling <laughs> and everything <laughs> or being, you know, coming to, to uh, coming into question um, was another thing I was noticing, um, you know, with this movie. Other than that, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a really good movie, you know, um, and it was a lot darker than what I, you know, what I encountered with the first movie and coming from a casual perspective. Right. What do you think, Hitch? Well, you know, this movie is a special movie, in my opinion, because this came out when I was a senior in high school. So this is actually like right at boom, you know, peak, like waste. They have lots of time to waste, lots of money uh, to waste. And I've, I have a picture of this because I went to see this movie on opening night. And this is the first Star Wars I actually got out to for opening night. And I went in cosplay. And, and the funny thing is, you know, I was in this play called Don't Drink the Water. And uh, I went. I just didn't have time to change, so I just went in this costume, which is uh, the costume I wore in the show, uh, Bermuda shorts and all. And I was just, people kept asking me what character I was supposed to be, and I just told them I was Luke's uncle. I was like a Han Skywalker. Uh, Han Skywalker, wow. Yeah, and you know, a lot of that... <laughs> A lot of that made me think back to to that time, and it's 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 so weird to think about. But if if you if you got pregnant on nine eleven, <laughs> your baby would have been born when this movie came out, pretty much, right? I mean, this yeah. is exact. This is that school year because that's that's what ha happened in the beginning of my um of my senior year. So this is the nine eleven Star Wars, 
And so, you know, one of the things that we're experiencing now in 2021 is a lot of um, tumult amongst, um, well, about the presidential election and the coming inauguration on Wednesday. And that tumult, I think, is making us sort of, I think we're feeling that in the soul of this movie, right? We're feeling this sort of angst. Uh, to speak directly to the political end of the plotting here, you know, at the time, I thought that a president or an elected leader trying to take total control of a democracy was farcical. And now, obviously, <laughs> I don't I don't feel like that anymore. <laughs> I feel like that, that scared me real bad. Yeah, you know, I, I think maybe this watch, I like the movie a little bit more. And I think I could put my finger on what I didn't like about it the first time. <clears throat> so here's my here's my thing about this movie. And the, the thing that doesn't work about it, but I think it's okay. So this movie, the love story between Anakin and Padme stinks. It's terrible. It's bad. It's bad. It's yeah. not written really great. And to be honest, the matchup between these people stinks. And I'm gonna I'm gonna point this out because I, I was we were texting as we watched, and the thing I kept texting you guys was, oh my god, this guy commits to committing a genocide, and then and then Padme's just like, we're married now. <laughs> right <laughs> and then she's like well it couldn't have been that well you know your mother died like this whole scene exactly plays out like this he's like well your mother died may you know maybe something we can say it was something terrible and he goes no 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 that was all over with and even after it was done i still slaughtered them all even the kids Ooh, and then they make out was... it's the weirdest thing ever and i'm just like yeah, thinking to myself yeah. you know i remember seeing this movie and at the time i was like okay something was wrong about that and i didn't get what it was and then the anakin thing just didn't you know there was something about it that didn't make a lot of sense. And then I'm watching this movie now in 2021. And as soon as we get to the Lars household, he says the sand, he says the sand people are animals and we should kill them all. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's the very first thing that said in the place where Luke Skywalker is going to grow up. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I definitely felt that darkness. Like you said, DP, this go around, especially in Anakin, because my goodness gracious he commits to this slaughter of an entire like tribe yeah. which is just an extended family unit because these are tribal people yeah and you know we yeah. say star wars is a western right right so who are the i mean who are who are the sand people this is a western these are you right. know uh the native americans and apparently it's just totally cool to slaughter him and then we can just go to some bug planet and do some more killing and that I, I, that gets her that gets her motor running for some reason i don't know I was about to say it was great to see the sand people because um, I'm relating them from like Mandalorian and stuff. So I mean, I, for everybody that's like watching throwback stuff or um, just just getting reminisce, you know, reminiscing about you know watching Mandalorian and reminiscing about what they seen in Star Wars, it was a great way to tie stuff back. So well, we know the sand people are people. We know they're not animals. We know they're not heartless. We know that about okay. them now because yeah. of our perspective from the Mandalorian. So that yes. makes that scene yes. where yes. he just goes yes. ham and starts yes. cutting people yep. so mm -hmm. much more impactful yeah. because we yeah. know for a fact that he yeah. is in fact committing these murders and for some reason everybody's turning a blind eye because of his ability and, <laughs> and that that uh makes a lot more sense to me now than it did back then <laughs> what are you thinking ken so i'm gonna come to anakin's defense here uh oh oh here here's the thing and here's how high you know, when when I watched the movie, I watched it when it was in out in the theaters like you did, Hitch. I watched it probably over 100 times in the theater. I watched it subsequently many times per year since then. And this this one of the prequel, this is my favorite one because it really, really dives into how this story gets kickstarted. So it's the accelerant to the fire of the galaxy. OK, this this movie. So. I get what you're saying, Hitch. I totally get you. You know, you can't just go and just decimate an entire little tribe of people out of out of anger. But why did he do it? One, he's already he's a very powerful Jedi on the fence between good and evil. And all he's looking at things and he's getting pushed to the to the evil side. Obi-Wan is giving him a hard time. Padme's kind of not really accepting him right off the bat. So she's get being very, you know, uh, guarded with him. And then these monsters murder his mother, who he's yeah. already guilty for spending, I, I, I'm, and forgive me, is it like 16 years? He's 16 years away? It's about 10. In the, something, something like that. So he's, 
he he's he feels like he abandoned her for the, for this period of time to be a Jedi. So there's guilt, there's anger, there's fear, there's uh, you know he he's he's not getting the the love back from Padme that he that he expected, and it all just explodes. And I totally get why he murdered all those Tuscan Raiders. I I might too. <laughs> I, I think I and and I feel like he's I feel like Anakin, although he he goes he goes a little bit far and all the great dictators of the of history go a little bit far, but along yeah, the way they sure bright, do. There's bright points though along the way. You know, when you're when you're when you're going down a certain path, there's always points where there's good. And and anyone can admit that. that there's like good things and he has a good uh, thought of he wants a government that gets people gets things done and solves problems for the people. He says that he says he, he wants to just solve problems, stop all the arguing and the bickering and the debates, and solve the problem. Do it, and that's the kind of person he wants to be. And he solved the problem. He well, he couldn't he couldn't save his mother, but he solved the problem. He got rid of the Tuscan Raiders. So in his mind, he sort of solved that problem but he's now conflicted what he just did versus what he should have done so i, yeah, I whether that's a good or bad thing that's a big question well, so he right. solved the problem but it's, right. it's a question of right it's a very questionable there's a lot of ethical questions and it goes it goes to his 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 training and how he's going to use that now how do you move forward through it what's your next step but the way the the way the movie really built on built and shown showed you how everything the, the whole stage was laid out for the galactic empire to rise up and take over because the the basically the population was just sick of all the the, the bickering and the, the trade federation and the bank federation and 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 yeah, they couldn't get along and everything was being torn apart and in the, the the uh you know the there were gangsters and, and mafia everywhere on all the planets. People were just sick of it. They wanted something that, that brought order to the galaxy. And that's that yeah. was the Galactic Empire. Well, and in the beginning, but Palpatine's already in charge. He's already been in charge for 10 years. So if you're talking about a system where it's <laughs> inherently unjust and, you know, there's slavery, let's not forget that that's actually what's going on in Tatooine. You know, you, right. you can't just... You can't just say, you know, Palpatine himself can't say, well, we need to do, we need to do this, we need to bring order to the galaxy because he's he's the um, <clears throat> he's the supreme chancellor. Yeah. So, you know, for me, this this whole thought about you know Anakin being a man of action and Anakin wanting to get things done, you know, as someone who spent the subsequent four years uh, on a political philosophy degree, I'll tell you that people that want to do these things often overlook the fact that the reason you don't want to charge ahead and do whatever you want is because you trample on a bunch of people's rights, and by the way, you end up building your government on a river of blood, and that's bad, which I, I guess is what the point of Star Wars Episode Four is, but, you know. <laughs> I, I, now, I'm just looking at this just the, this movie. Yeah, I, I see where Ken is coming from, from oh, the, sure. the story it's perspective. From yeah, it. it makes sense. Yeah. yeah I don't want to bring a whole bunch of, like, you know, arbitrary ethics into it. This is just mm -hmm. the movie, and this is the setup for the right. middle trilogy. Mm -hmm. and right. So you gotta you gotta start somewhere, and I think the movie does a really good job of building up the characters and giving you the stage that platforms the Galactic Empire and how that how that comes up. Right. And of course, what happens at the end? Anakin regrets everything that he did, everything, and he eventually comes back to the to the to the middle to the to the good, and you know, and 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 that's it. But right, still, yeah, my favorite of the prequel, anyway. It's up there for me as well. Um, I, I thought, it would, I mean, it was one of those things I really liked the movie. Um, some of the dialogue was, was a little iffy, but um, I thought the premise of the movie was well. It was directed well. I mean, like you were saying, being a digital film, I thought it flowed better than the first one, even by, you know, the character development. Um, the, the conflicts are pretty quick, but they weren't like too quick to where you jump to, you know, another planet or another scene. So I thought there was more attention to detail in some of the scenes. But uh, as I said, you know, and, I, and we'll get into this now. But I mean, I know all you listeners. I mean, I, as I said last week, I'm not a fan of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I do like the fact that we got the giant uh, kind of character holes. And I, I like how George set that up. I mean, clearly, we if you rewatch this now and you wouldn't have, might have not picked up on it like I didn't, but clearly it sees the holes 
in the Jedi Council because clearly he wasn't ready to be a Jedi Master, let alone a Jedi Knight. Yeah. And it just shows as far as his development yeah. for his Padawan, it, you know, Qui-Gon, before he met the kid, felt suffering, sensed these things. These are standard Jedi traits that each Master, I believe, should have. You know, how would Yoda, you know, sense that? How would the Council sense it, Mace Windu? But when these things are going on, he doesn't, he kind of turns a blind eye. And that's where this conflict is kind of not really hatred towards him, but this jealousy. And I guess they're both love for Padme, kind of, you know, and maybe this is what Yoda was talking about as far as why Jedi can't love, because certain people like Anakin, like Obi-Wan, kind of got blinded by being in love with Padme and their feelings towards her took their mind and focus off of what they should be as far as Jedi members and even sensing things. So I, I really thought how he set it up as we develop these characters further on was spot on. Um, you know, uh, the battle scenes, the, the lightsaber, the action. I mean, with this being digital, it looks, looks so much cleaner, like you guys oh, have yes. said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, the, the fights weren't too kind of, you know, over the top. I, I just thought as far as the movie was really balanced as far as how it was laid out and... Um, you know, it, it, this is really the, I think this is the fall of Jedi Empire, meaning um, even before episode three, I mean, right now the Jedi are militarizing, you know, clones. I mean, this is really like, I think where the Jedi Order lost their way. This is the episode where, you know, Yoda, the council, I mean, it's it's just not for what uh, we would assume the Jedi stand for as defenders of the peace. But I mean, you know, as we get dive into this, I mean, they literally have an army. So when, why would Jedi need an army, so to speak, of of this and even the assault um you know it's just it doesn't seem to me when you think about jedi like things this would be from a defenders of the you know kind of galaxy perspective that you would come to a jedi knight so to speak one thing that's interesting is this this battle of geonosis in the first the uh, execution scene right when all the jedi show right. up the mm -hmm. jedi aren't really like soldier soldiers you know what i mean they're they're not you know they have they're like wizards almost and they're kind of like uh, force multipliers. So seeing them fight as a group was sort of weird, right? And it's weird right. to see them take so many casualties there. I mean, that they got decimated. There were probably 150 Jedi in the in the the thing, and maybe 20 or 30 come out of there. You know, if we're talking about maybe 10,000 Jedi, I think I've seen that number floated around at the beginning of maybe Episode One. This decimation. And like you said, the suborning of, of themselves to the state is really what does them in because the Jedi are essentially philosophers and they're bound to the force. And what happens when the force and the state disagree? So now they are unable to see that they're being manipulated by, of course, Darsidious, the greatest manipulator in the history of the galaxy. Uh, this whole thing seems a lot more intricate when you look at it. And then and you guys are talking about Leia. Let's think about the irons that, that Palpatine has in the fire here. So he's got Dooku running his own Dooku game, right? Which is being the, the separatist and trying to get that chaos so that he can get his special powers. He's got the assassination plot on Padme to try to isolate Anakin from Obi-Wan, right? And then he suggests he, he's the one that interjects them into all of that. And here's the only thing that, that this is not ever stated, but it has to be true he has to be behind what happens to Shmi Skywalker. He has to be, because who else would do that? Who else is going to tell these sand people to just hold her and torture her for 30 days? Because what's the point of that if it isn't to get Anakin distracted and to get Anakin to go on this, this chase for his mother that will end in this massacre, that will end in this giant step forward for Anakin toward the dark side. And he has so many other things spinning around this, right? with the droid army and the clone army and the senatorial gambiting and making Jar Jar Binks into a, <laughs> like a, uh, a useful idiot that the Jedi are too busy dealing with these galaxy wide <laughs> issues to do anything about the fact that suddenly, you know, their golden boy, the, the, the man who's supposed to bring balance to the force is now taking this step towards selfishness, taking this step towards self-satisfaction because that's all he gets out of this vengeance. I wonder when when would have Sidious influenced the Tuscans to to do that? I, this the story was she was uh, picking, she was she was doing something, she was uh, harvesting something, and she stayed back while the others went in, and that's when the Tuscans got her. So do you think it was a kidnap? <laughs> kidnapping plot of some sort maybe maybe through through the huts 
Sidious, Sidious working through the huts might have. Well, just influenced. think about how much money this guy has, and like what's at his command, right? And we're talking about basically the entire the entire galactic civilization. What he has to do is so minimal, and he already knows that that he knows all about Anakin. He knows Anakin, right? He knows all about this story. He knows that Anakin's mother is still somewhere in the middle of Tatooine. All he has to do is go find her, and that's his weak point. That's the thing. See, that's the thing about leaving Shmi behind. That's so that I remember last week I said that was that was the Phantom Menace was not getting her. It leaves this giant back door. You know, we talk about Grogu and the Mandalorian and how Luke says he has to get he will not be safe until he has control of his powers. Right. Well, Anakin's the same way. Anakin is not going to be safe until he has control of his powers. And what can make him lose it? Hurt his mama. And let me tell you, I mean, I'm not. Yeah. Listen. You hurt my mom. I mean, I'm not going to be. <laughs> it ain't going to be this, nice this, neither, right? Yeah, it's not. Hey, you. I mean, it's just like Ken said. I mean, you're not going to be pretty, you know, too happy about that. And mm -hmm. your feelings, you know, they they bubble up. And not everyone handles feelings in a um, you know, straight calm way and everything. So it was a good appreciation and complexity to see that the way that Anna, well, the way that Lucas wanted Anakin to handle his feelings was in a more of a dark side type of way. And to expound on a little bit on what um, Trent, um, Mitch was T. Mitch was talking about, um, with the Jedi Council, they had the, the wisdom, because they are the council, to know that, it, that um, Anakin was too young to come into, you know, you know, being trained to be a Jedi. He was, um, he, was, he was too old at that point to, you know, be trained in that manner. But, you know, Mace, I'm uh, not Mace, <laughs> um, um, Oh, wow. Yeah, Qui Gon. You know, he he was so forceful in his in his recommendation on him being trained, and so I guess just so pumped, you know, that that he saw uh, a spark or you know light, you know, with within um or saw something within Anakin that he sort of forced his way into um you know his recommendation on you know Anakin being trained, and which bent you know Yoda of all people who should know. To say, okay, well, maybe he can be trained, and thus that may have started this, this, you know, the 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 fall, or what you say of, you know, the council, or you know, going down that path because they sort of doubted themselves when they really had the wisdom to know you don't train these kids. I mean, you don't train, you know, um, um, you don't train the 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 um. What I want to say here, the He'll be um, a youngling, but he's a little older than that. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. He's young, but he's a little older than you know what the younger ones should be. So you don't want to train them that old to become, um, you know, dread jet Jedi because they're still dealing with their feelings. They're still, you know, trying to find out who they are and everything. Whereas a young one, you could just, you know, just mold and you know take them anywhere that you want. And thus, what you know, Kim was talking about, you get the the instances where he is being. You know, just 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 acting all crazy and everything, and what you know Hitch was saying, doing like um, you know, committing genocide and stuff. So Anakin was way too old to be trained as a Jedi. Is the roundabout of thing of what I'm saying? Yeah. See, I mean, uh, when you talk about that, see, I, I'm on the full. I'm, I I do the whole 180. I think he wasn't too old. I just think that his the ideology of the Jedi was so lost at this point, and I felt like it was split in half. If you watch the beginning of episode one and we discussed Qui-Gon's interactions with Yoda alone to training Anakin and why he wanted to do it, I felt that Yoda was more on the gray side as we find him, you know, in the older, even final sequel trilogy as he's talking to Luke um, on the uh, um, desolate planet, on, on the whatever, whatever he's left at it in the unknown regions. He kind of comes to the uh, understanding when they talk about the, the books. The, uh, the Journal of the Wills, that he understands after all this time what Qui-Gon's been telling him, how we have to have more balance in the Force, to where it was just felt like we're saying the Council at this point is split in half. Qui-Gon feels that they should be more of a gray Jedi or more of a balanced Jedi as far as their ideology, their thought process to be able to experience love. But I feel like maybe he was the only one outside of Yoda that felt that way, which was a big divide. So, I, I mean... We'll never know. Obviously, it's a hindsight story, but um, I just think that maybe if that uh, you know Qui Gon, you know, would have stuck with him, it would have been different. And the telling part is mm. Dooku's interaction. Possibly, with, yeah. It was Dooku's interaction with Obi Wan as he's speaking to him about his master mm. and telling him how you know the Council doesn't understand anything that's going on, how they don't know. And if you read that Dooku novel as well, it ties into you know how powerful, really, and high how highly regarded Qui Gon was as a Jedi. Um, throughout the Force 
and on the council. The fact that he didn't take a seat, um, you know, I, I just thought that it would be a completely different outlook with it. Um, maybe this is Obi Wan's story, as he is, you know, the next Vader or or something. But yeah, it, it it's definitely a good setup. It it's just Watch that. Yeah, you know, how crazy would that be? And you know what you what you guys were saying about like Qui Gon. Okay, Qui Gon. If Qui Gon had, had trained Anakin, things would have been different, right? We can right. probably say that, but for some reason, Qui Gon was out. Obi Wan felt it was his responsibility to take take over and train right. Anakin. And to your point, T. Mitch, you like you uh, you you were saying that you know Obi Wan was blind to see some of Anakin's problem faults, right. right? And I think that there was more of a a family bond between them. It wasn't a it wasn't a master and apprentice or Padawan. They were, they, 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 I, I think they, they were like brothers and they, he does say to him, you were like a brother to me, you know? Right. And, 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 and I think that there, that was the problem. It wasn't Obi-Wan was a terrible teacher or Anna, you know, they weren't, they were just bonded in a different way than Qui-Gon and Anakin. I think Obi-Wan and Anakin, they bonded in a way they were family. So I think Obi-Wan did, cause you do, you know, I, well, I'm a, I'm an only child. So yeah, you, you, anybody have you, a hit? You, anybody got a brother, sister? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you, they do something wrong. You, you're like, well, I didn't even see you do that because I love you so much. You know, is that, is that what yeah. you think it's like to have siblings? Ken? <laughs> <laughs> I think if I had one, that I would be with my brother or sister. But my parents decided that they didn't want any more, so they were like, <laughs> and I'll see. Broke, broke the mold. Broke. Yeah, they were like, oh, forget it. So I think that there was more of a family bond between them, and that's why you, Team Mitch. I think that's why you feel that. Right. One wasn't. To me, different. Yeah. To me, they come. It's basically like they become Jedi Knights at the same time. Same. Yeah. I, I, they, you know what I mean? I don't like you're saying they are brothers because Obi Wan's yeah. not far enough to train him, and I feel like Anakin's powerful sets so that leveler. Obi Wan might have a little bit of knowledge, but the power oversees it. So they basically become knights at the same time. There is no master apprentice, like you're saying. Exactly. So like Obi Wan was 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 already uh, was already trained, but not skilled enough to train. Right. Anakin needed trained and was way more powerful than anybody in the council could even deal with. So no one yeah. wanted, no one yeah. were like, oh, that's yeah. bad. you know. Yeah. So, so I think that probably played into it. But that made that that was important because it created. Anakin. It created who he right. was. And Obi-Wan was sort of the lost solo soldier. I mean, he was just sort of out on his own. He let, he had to leave. He was go- he was gonzo. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't ready to be a tra- uh, uh, trainer, you know, or have a Padawan or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Anakin keeps referring to him as his father. You know, you're like my father and everything, but he really doesn't treat him, you know, I mean, besides saying it, you know, he doesn't really treat him all like that. Yeah. Well, I guess maybe he does, because if, 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 if your father is always telling you what to do, you know, sometimes in families, you know, you could get a little resentful for that, you know, especially if you think you know everything. Right. You know? And he eventually um, took him out. He mm-hmm. took him out. Right. He took him right out. Just like old Yeller. Yeah. <laughs> Just like old Yeller. <laughs> Uh, you know, what, I'll tell you this about, about this relationship is being an older brother, I will say that if, if my younger brother and he, he's faster than me for once, a foot race always win, and he'll, I'll write that down and he can have it. Andy can have that. Uh, if he ever would beat me at anything, it would enrage me. I mean, honestly, it would enrage me. I, I would not be able to see straight and I would fix the problem. And that's the problem with being the older brother. You'd have to know you can't just, I mean, I could never just haul off and hit my brother and he would live. He's much smaller than me. You know what I mean? So th- here's, here's this other angle that I, that I want to talk about here is that Anakin is, you know, you give him a standardized test, he gets a hundred out of a hundred, right? He's the top, mm-hmm. the top guy. So the things that Obi-Wan needs to teach him, these like, you know, uh, telekinesis, all that stuff, he's just a natural at. The thing Obi-Wan doesn't have is, is moral experience. That's the thing he's he's lacking. He's too young to know what is a gray area right. even. So okay. he's not able yeah. to describe these things to Anakin because he's he has this immature understanding of the universe. And let's yeah. not forget he has, you know, no like there's no romantic end to the Jedi. And so these guys have this weird blind spot for love that's weird just because they grow up and, you know, if you mistrain a Jedi, it's like the difference between Man of Steel and Brightburn. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. the consequence here. And then the reason that they are so strict 
about the, co the connections they allow you to have is because if you get that wrong, it's devastating for the galaxy. <laughs> that's, right. that's, that's what so I was big. saying is it's easier to train a youngling, you know, who has a lot more room to grow than it, as you get older, your, your views start to narrow, your feelings start to get more, you know, developed and things start to get a little bit more a straight, more of a straight line where is if you were younger, I mean, uh, it's easier to train a baby, like you said, the difference between Brightburn and Superman, you know, um, if, if Anakin had the, if Anakin, like you guys were saying, had, um, you know, um, my man, <laughs> I keep forgetting his name. Um, Qui -Gon. Um, Qui -Gon. Liam, yeah, Qui -Gon. just say Qui -Gon. Liam Neeson. It's cool. The, the Liam. Yeah, Liam, yeah. <laughs> Take it. Um, uh, if, if he had Qui-Gon to really train him directly, he would have been a, it would have been a much different path for him. So you know, a lot more, a lot more attention would have been paid to, you know, a lot more attention, yeah. you know, would have been paid to. Let me posit this to you, though, DP, just because this is this is something that's been that's always been interesting to me. So we see what what Obi Wan does when Qui Gon dies, right? Yeah. We know that reaction. What's Anakin's? What's Anakin's reaction when Qui Gon dies? Like, let's think about that's that for point. a second. Yeah, that's a I mean, good point. I, I'm sitting here thinking like Qui Gon's meditating in that in that shield room. And I'm thinking he's trying to see the outs here, and he sees him beating Darth Maul, and like, eventually Anakin turns to the dark side every single time. It's like this. Uh, uh, Thomas, uh, who comes in all the time with us, will will tell me he'll say something like, "Well, that's exactly like what happened to uh, Jason Solo in the Legend series." He'll say exactly that's what happened. So it's it's interesting to see it here. And these are all sort of you know maybe when I was younger I couldn't get past how how wooden like the love story was like it just didn't feel believable to me. You know what I mean? And and now I get it. It's because it isn't. <laughs> she should not like like Padme should not like this guy. This guy's dangerous and shit. Like, right? Like that's that's the case. Yeah. So well, yeah. I'll have to say that it's the only of all the movies I've ever seen. This is the only time. This is the only love story that I'll watch. This is it. <laughs> this is this is this is the nerd love story. And yes, it's a little stale and uh, maybe a little uncomfortable at the, at at times. But when they're in the uh, the Game of Thrones set, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, at the end. And they got the candelabras, yeah. with, they're in High Garden, and, you know, and you know it's real moody and the fire in the background, and you know that that's that's great, that's good stuff right there, good nerd uh, love because that's that's it's, it's supposed to be uncomfortable when nerds love, it's uncomfortable, so and, that's. And it can push his way into Padme's, you know, I mean, as soon, but I mean, I guess on, on that end too, as soon as Aunt Padme saw Anakin after how many years or whatever, she was like, oh man. <laughs> he's six oh, look three. At you. <laughs> he's like, you know what I mean? He's like a D1, like power forward. You know what I mean? He's got great uh, stats. Yeah, you know, he's buddy. like, Dick Vitale called him a diaper dandy last year, baby. Yeah. I, mean, I can see the off in bed and everything. You know? I can see the attraction here. I mean, and let's let's talk about Hayden Christensen. I guess right. Like, let's just. I mean, yeah. let's talk about because he's coming back for for some of these Disney series, and there's been this interesting sort of like revival of, of of his career almost in in this in this role. And I gotta say, I didn't. I feel like if maybe somebody else had written some of the dialogue he had to deliver, I would have liked him more. I come back to this. What is it? The same thing. I had a same problem with Jake Lloyd last time. Is that is that he said yippee and I was like that's terrible. No one ever says yippee. I've never said the word yippee in my life. And then we come down and he's like, I just hate sand. And you're like, <laughs> like why it are gets you talking about that. <laughs> Writing like, no in wonder, direction. No wonder this you know? girl isn't into you're talking about sand and you're doing telekinesis in front of her and being like, oh my boss would be pissed off if he saw me doing this. Showing off. He's showing off and showing out. And look, you want to talk about an awkward, an awkward love scene? Let's talk about how awkward it is to commit to thirty, to confess to thirty murders. <laughs> That's pretty awkward too. <laughs> so I mean, I, I remember, I remember seeing this movie, and then at the end of it, I was like, "Well, when's he going to turn to the dark side?" And now, <laughs> now I'm watching it, and I'm just like, <laughs> "Well," I, and then like I'm like, "Wow, he just like massacred those people." And I have to believe that it's because. And listen, I'm going to say this again. I brought it up. It's because of 9/11. This is the 9-11 movie. Remember, we were all on, I mean, people were on the war path in, in spring of 2002. I, I mean, I don't want to get into the particulars here, but uh, Go Get Them All was pretty pretty common. Uh, that was yeah. a pretty common outlook. So I think maybe yeah. the history made me miss that. And that's a weird feeling as an old man to have. <laughs> I mean, definitely, you know, um, you gain perspective, you know, as things go on in the world and everything. And, you know, you see this you see this movie in its place in history and stuff 
And I mean, I have to say, I mean, after this is my second time seeing this movie after seeing it in the theaters, because I've been after all these years and the hate that has come for like the prequels and stuff made me not want to watch these movies until we started doing this podcast again. Um, now, seeing it again, I'm like, OK, it's a lot of good stuff in here and it's a lot of um, subjects and a lot of um, um, areas that Lucas had touched on that are really timeless. I mean, you know, he's talking about, you know, the way, you know, dictatorships run and the way democracy runs and, you know, um, how, you know, politics happen and people make decisions, you know, uh, all the bickering and stuff that Anakin, you know, that Ken we were talking about earlier, you know, talking about and how all that is maybe easy for Anakin to see, okay, you make one or one person makes the decision, um, you get things done, you know, you just want to get things done. Never mind that he's already halfway to the dark side, you know, and his talking to Pat, you know, Padme and stuff. And she's looking at him like, OK, well, you know, I can see your side of that. But, you know, that's not what I'm about, you well, know, we'll, but I still love you. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll be secret. We'll do it in secret. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That they, yeah. That, that was the yeah. solution. So we yeah. can't get married. Well, well, they do get married, but it's in secret. We won't tell anybody. So it's OK because no one's going to know. Yeah. So. That was all right. You know, it's interesting that, that uh, you know, hits it through on there, and I never really thought about it till now. I mean, as we see the the end of Palpatine, and this is seven, eight, nine, the ability he has with the Force is uncanny. I mean, you know, now that I think about it, what if he put those nightmares in his head? You know, because remember, he is having nightmares about his mom. These have been going on for a while, and typically Jedi don't. And that's another thing that we're talking about. You know, he's so powerful with the Force, so conniving that. These are things that the Jedi aren't aware of other than Yoda. Yoda talks about with him your dreams. Uh, Yoda semi-senses it, but doesn't understand enough. But now that I, we're starting to put this pie together, especially as we get to the manipulation of um, Ben Solo and Rey in their mind and the basically created love story that he's created with these two characters to make a force bond, if we go all the way back to now, it all makes more sense as far as, like, you know, Hitch was saying, maybe this was his plan all along. I mean, he's already sensed how strong he is. And at this point, you know, Duke, who's older, as we're talking about, he's in even in the novels we've read. He's always been one of those guys who's just ate through apprentices based on, you know, and even some of the legend stuff Sith are fueled by anger. And there's a point to where the body breaks down. And as Duke gets older the anger can only drive you so much. So he's looking for the new youngest, best thing. So like, you know, as we watch this now and now we're discussing it, it all kind of brings all nine, even into more perspective to me, as far as literally how strong he was as, uh, as a ruler and as a Sith Lord. Well, as a, a, a thing I'm seeing with, you know, coming into this universe, I'm, I'm a big Marvel fan and everything um, with the star Wars universe. They do a really good job you know, with retconning, <laughs> you know, right. filling in gaps of story because the, 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 the story is linear. So it's in like a Marvel story and everything, you got so many different, because the characters have been around for so long, you got so many different, uh, you know, aspects of the characters and, you know, different alternate universes and, you know, different ways the story can be, you know, the stories of the characters can go where it's not filling in the gaps. Star Wars has a beginning and a middle, we haven't gotten to the end, but it's almost like a reality thing where you're filling in gaps of story of where some things that really didn't really make sense, you know, in the beginning, once the, the once a future story fills in that gap, okay, you can appreciate it a lot more now, you know, now that you're starting to put things together. So that's, you know, coming from a casual, you know, viewer's perspective, that's what I'm seeing, you know, with, while I'm watching these episodes and also listening to you guys talk about, um, you know, some of the, uh, you know, events that happen. I think we all, can't we can't forget this is invasion of the body snatchers too, right? Like he's just trying to steal Anakin's body. <laughs> like that's the whole point of this. What'd you say, Ken? Well, no, I was just gonna say what you what to 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 pick, piggyback on what you were saying. Uh, so, the Star Wars universe, every, you can relate to it. I mean, there's real stuff there, right? There's real. This is this is how life is. Life is. Oh man. Strange. And, you wake up one day and you feel one way, then you sleep and then you have a conversation with somebody and you feel a different way. And then yeah. they, their feelings go a little bit to the left. Yeah. Then, oh, no, the left's not good anymore. So I'm going to go back to the right or I'm going to yeah. stay in the middle. I'm going to disagree with this. I'm going to disagree with that. Then you can see 
you can see your life in all of this, this whole thing. And I think that's when George wrote this, when the, when the creator, when father, if I refer to <laughs> father, when he create, created this and decided to pull this out of his brain and put it down on paper, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to give life to life, but in a, in a fantasy way. Yeah, so, in a fantasy way, right, it, it, science, science fiction. Yeah, it, you wouldn't offend anybody because, I mean, really, there's no, there's no real, uh, uh, you know, all the things that we conflict with, like the, the hate and people, you know, making fun of people and bullies and racism and all the different things, it doesn't really exist in this universe, right? I mean, not, it's not really there. It's not really talked, right. but right. you see, you can see solutions for the problem. You can see mm-hmm. how, how you can live your life and not have all these problems or, there's it it evolves and and i mean i think that's why myself that's why i love this love these stories because they're so thought provoking and yeah you know, these conversations yeah. about things and it space. could get real it could get real idealistic and everything which is fine because it's it's not a it's not a game of thrones you know right. it doesn't have to right. be that you know super you know complicated and complex but it gives you just enough especially if you're trying to um it, What's George Lucas in what interviews he he's trying to cater to kids. It's a kids thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and if you're watching it, you know, from that perspective, they get a lot of good lessons, you know, from these movies and the way they deal with like their feelings and attitudes and stuff. As you grow, as we grow, you know, and still loving these characters, maybe we wish that you know some of the um the subjects and everything will be you know a lot more complex. Like seeing like um you know not seeing stormtroopers go down as easily. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Give the give them a break. Throw them a bone. Hey, at least we at least we got some damage this movie. I mean, Anakin, you know. Yeah, you know, I guess you know. As one of the final points of, t- of today's episodes, um, what did you guys think? You know, as far as the ending, you know, the the Dooku conflict. I mean, I oh, thought the battle. Yeah, I thought yeah, the I battle was exceptional, yeah. Um, yeah. but. You know, it's just two Jedi's to an old. You know, I, oh, I would have been. I, you know, before, before, uh, Mitch. Before we get right into that, I just want to say one thing. I did really like about, um, like the the. Well, we haven't even really talked about Django, right? No, Django we Fett? haven't even brought him up. Oh, no, we yeah. haven't. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Not even a little bit. That was a, this a real, you know, important section in the movie. I, I I just for once like seeing like the Mandalorian armor and everything, and you know him, you know, using it. I'm like, oh man, I'm right back at home, you know, watching the Mandalorian and and, and the fighting and everything with um him and um Obi Wan. Um, yeah, that you know that scene, I, I you know I thought was really good, really good. I mean, that that's the beginning of the um the clone army too. So it, yeah, it's a yeah, huge point, you know. And it's what is it from what we find out in the Mandalorian? It's basically the basis of the st- stormtroopers to this date. I mean, I, I guess based on this interaction as we're finding out in the weird part, like Ken's saying, I mean, these clones of Boba aren't dumb. I mean, they're soldiers. So yes. the fact that they are kind of so inept is, you know, a little frustrating yeah. because these aren't like just your, you know, slap them, you know, helmet on somebody. Here we go. I would think the ones in the final prequel trilogy that seem to be the best and they're humans would be the worst because there's good, there's bad. I mean, you know, as Finn as a character, there's complicated. Yeah. yeah, I mean, these were trained soldiers that were cloned from a soldier. So if right. you took an army ranger and cloned them, this is what you would get. Yeah, the first order uh, stormtroopers were kidnapped. Correct. They were kidnapped and enslaved and made to be soldiers. Right. The clones were raised and trained like, um, like on like Vulcans. Right. They were from a very early age. Uh, sorry, I didn't bring another. <laughs> it, but they you know they're trained and educated and, and constantly every day and that's and nourished and you know they're they're fed well and they're trained and they're given the best equipment so the clone army was very very good i mean they went up against machines because machines don't give a damn and machines mm-hmm. keep making more machines so the fact that the clones yoda said it that they they actually pushed them back and they were retreating on the main front on Geonosia. Yoda was like, "Good job, guys." I mean, that was great too. Yoda as supreme commander of the clone yeah, army. army. Yeah. So these clones pushed the 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 mechaniques back and with very well. And I mean, there were some casualties, but I think there were more 
uh, Roger Rogers going down than there were clone troopers. Right. So, but yeah, and and as like you said, T. Mitch, as they evolved into the first order, and you got these like humans who were enslaved, you got they got stupider. I mean, and they got careless, and maybe they didn't want to be there. So, I think that was an that's an important thing. And the stormtroopers, the Imperial stormtroopers, were right in the middle. They were both. They were trained, but then they were also kind of enslaved into it. So maybe that's why they weren't so good. They were a little bit uh, uh, inconsistent. Right. Yeah, so real good section of that movie, and I mean, you know, portion of the movie. But yeah, going towards the end there, um, T. Mitch. Yeah, the um, I, I was pumped seeing Yoda, <laughs> Yoda, because <laughs> you never seen him in that aspect of just you know just being like you know a badass and everything. You know, pulling out the um, you know, pulling out his lightsaber and everything, and him and you know, um, Dooku just like you know throwing down and stuff, and he got ah. Oh, for, for such an old guy, he has moves. My man has some moves. Yep. <laughs> Yoda walking out of, like, that shadow of Yoda when he comes out. I have never in my life heard something get a cheer like that in a movie theater, ever. It's the number one thing that I've itch, ever heard get a cheer itch. in my life. I remember that experience because I'm, like I said, coming in from a casual, you know, perspective and everything. I remember a loud cheer when Yoda, yeah, when he was just coming out and doing his thing and everything. So, I mean, for a movie, you don't hear those, you know, you don't get cheers and everything like that in movies and stuff. Like last time I got a cheer was in Endgame watching yeah. Avengers. Stuff. But, I was going to say that. I was going to say that's probably the biggest, <laughs> that's the, probably the biggest thing is I, when, um, uh, no, it would be probably when Captain America got, uh, uh, yes. when he caught the hammer. Got the, that was yeah, like, that was yeah, it. Yeah, that was probably yeah. the biggest, like, Cheer yeah. that, or, or maybe when they all came out of the top, the portal. Because if you didn't that see the spoilers, that was the second biggest. That was the yeah, second. If yeah. you didn't see the spoilers and seeing that, that was that was pretty epic. The final yeah. fight scene. But uh, yeah, I do remember as you guys said is when he came around that corner, you saw the shadow, and then he reached inside his robe. I mean, that was oh, that, man. as soon as you see him pull his saber and the ignite, everybody just <laughs> the excite. Everybody sits back up in their chair, you know, in the theater. I was like, oh. But yeah, yeah, that was. That's why yeah. you pay the ticket. That's yeah. why you know you go to you go to see it on the big screen with a crowd of people and everything. Get that 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 community feel and everybody and everybody knows how big that scene was. You know. Right. You know, and it, it was, also was the, a big scene for. Um, go ahead, Hitch. There wasn't the internet really like there is either. So like the idea, the spoilers weren't really out there like they are now. There were rumors that. Yoda was going to get in a lightsaber fight. And I remember standing in line with all these people and being like, there's no, there's no way in hell Yoda is going to get in a lightsaber. That's not, it's just not his bag. And so this happening was a huge shock to me that they would actually go there. And it's one of the first times that Star Wars cashed a check they wrote in a way that made me super happy. So I really liked that a lot. Right. Remember, this This is the first time, though, also, that Anakin has, has suffered because... You know, he's, you know, like we're talking about, he's basically a teen at this point, and you know yeah. how teens are stubborn, hard-headed. Right. The fact that Dooku cuts him up, he loses a fight, I mean, it's one of those things, sometimes, you know, too big for your britches, you know, he doesn't win, he gets extremely injured, he could have been killed, you know, so it's one of those things that he becomes to realize, and maybe this leads into episode three and his assertion for the power he's trying to, to get to save everyone, and, and including Padme, that he finds out that, hey, man, I'm not the strongest thing out here yeah you know, so he's, that's he's you know. he's um he is he has a kryptonite you know in, in a sort right. of way you know that led to his, his downfall too because that was one of his big that was his biggest sin is that he wanted to stop death right. he wanted to be able to bring people back to life that was his yes biggest, yes you know, biggest yes. sin yeah. that was what really drove him not only over the edge but then gone he was just gone he was no longer human he was more machine than man and that was the piece that really put the nail in the coffin for him as obi-wan said it um and that and that was that was it just wanting to stop death or bring back you know pe bring people back to life that uh, that was that was the biggest downfall so we, other. so we see him watch watch his mom die and so now we see, and we'll see in episode three what he's willing to do to prevent his his child from dying. Mm hmm. Yes. Right. Wow. It's crazy. I mean, we get that you that play the quick Plagueis reference, you know, and then this kind of like you think about it. Yeah, it's, you know, 
it's just you know the, the more I watch these and, and and I hope everybody listening and watching as well please smash the like and and please give us the ratings the the five star ratings on our podcast but uh you know the more I watch and just put my teeth into this stuff like the references and then you tie it back I mean like it's just it, it's it's so much it, it reacts it's, 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 it's a lot of meat on the bones a lot of beautiful you know you know the he talks about how Plagueis you know how some young you know Padawan to Plagueis it killed his master and this you know this the manipulation of him at a young age to to now I mean it's just it, it like I said as far as writing a character I think George Lucas really focused on the story of you know developing Palpatine to you know he's the only character over all nine movies that I can be like wow his arc has just been so clear. He's been so powerful. Some other characters you can say, eh, you know, maybe I guess as we get older, Obi Wan, and you see how he cares for Luke and his sacrifice towards Luke and the Force. Um, you know, you might make that, but I just think the way he sets up Palpatine, it's almost like he can have his own movie. The way he starts him off as a character, that's why everybody's calling for in these extended, these expanded things, a young Palpatine series. You know, to, to tie in Plagueis as is, you know, Padawan because. As we're hearing, and this is an interesting sidebar, you know, one of the things Star Wars is trying to do is add a lot more Sith lore in the future. So with Disney Plus and whatever platform they, they choose to move forward with, whether it's its own Star Wars platform, that they're listening to a lot of people, and there will be a lot more Sith lore coming in the future here over the next coming years. Yeah, I mean, be there are people there to eat it up. So Probably. They're getting our money. So I will, sh- I will assume shutting up. <laughs> <laughs> Take it, take it. Take it all. Yeah. Oh, I actually have some dollars here. Hold on. <laughs> wow. Overall, yeah. I, overall, thought, I thought it was a, um, like I said, a fun ride. You know, um, great second, you know, second episode. You know, um, middle of the saga and everything, or you know, at least Anakin's portion. Um, you know, on his way to you know going to the dark side, and as Ken alluded to earlier, it's a great way of seeing a lot more of his complexities as being a young, um, young, youngling, you know, young child or whatever, um, teenager and seeing how that, um, you know, developed from the first movie, you know, how he was then. Cause we didn't really get any hints of dark, you know, him being on the dark side in the first movie, this, and as being a teenager, you have a dark side, like Ken was saying, you know, you, you, you see yourselves in, Anakin, maybe you may not be, you know, go to that dark side, you know, go to that point by like committing genocide and everything. But you can experience some ways where you've done some things in your teenage years that have been highly questionable that you would not do today. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe for the record, no, you are wrong. <laughs> for the record, in posterity, I have never done anything bad <sighs> ever in my life. Well, you need to start. <laughs> you need to do something because you have, to have this kid. You're not allowed to anymore. There we go. Uh, that's true. That is true. Hurry it up. And, you know, it's interesting to think about, you know, this is the Star Wars that came out when I was the same age as Anakin Skywalker, about 19, 18, you know, right in that age. And it's interesting to think about how now I'm the age Obi-Wan is pretty much in this movie. I'm in my mid-30s, which I think he's probably 35-ish. I'm not, I'm not going to look for, you know, I'm not going to look it up. <laughs> he's probably about that. And it's interesting to, to see how that's shifted my perspective of all these guys, right? Like, I used to think that Anakin was an A-plus student, was a C-minus teacher. You know what I mean? Right. And now now it seems it feels like something different to me. It feels like there really isn't anybody that could, that could cordon him in because, like, you know, what stops what – stops who watches the Watchmen, right, DP? That's the question yeah. here. Who's going to yeah. stop him? And ultimately, right. if if he's allowed to attain his his potential, nobody will be able to stop him. That's deep, Hitch. Deep, 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 deep. I'm good for one of those a week, right. but only one. That's it. I don't, I don't get more than that. Anybody else have any final comments about the um the movie, or you know how how we're feeling about that? I mean, yeah, we'll just, you know, as we wrap it up here, you know, I mean, like I said, I feel, feel similar thoughts about the, um, you know, the the way the movie went. Um, I thought it was, uh, I, I'd give it about an eight. You know, I really liked the way it put together. The the scenes were great. The movie was good. Um, you know, whole, I guess, 180 compared to, you know, we, we, we see what it's like to do a proper middle movie. And as we said, we'll get, we'll progress along the Star Wars train, the other ones, but uh, we see what happens when you properly, 
keep the same producer and um, you know same have a writer. clear path where have you want to go. Path. Yep. So, without throwing shade at anybody, so to speak, well, I'll just I'll, I'll end on that note on my point. Uh, what are you guys' final thoughts? A lot, lot cleaner, lot cleaner film from the first one. I think George scaled it back a little bit with his uh, with his uh, jump into the use of uh, CG. I think he got over, he got over, he got excited with Phantom Menace and he CG'd everything. I think he yeah. did. He did it a lot in this one, but he also used a lot of sets. Yes, yeah. yes, great set. point. They, they had CG in the background, and you could tell um, characters were CG. <laughs> That that that's one criticism I'd have. Like Dex, great character, should have been a person in a costume. I think the interaction between him and Obi Wan would have been way cooler if it had just been, uh, like like Jabba, just just a, a a person in a costume. I think it would have been cooler. But it was a little that that scene was a little bit much for me. Kind of like it was just too much. Um, great. Fight scene between Obi Wan and Django, probably one of the best best ones. Aside from the, of course, Yoda lightsaber battles, but if you just look at battles between two soldiers, Obi Wan and Django Fett, I mean, it was amazing. It was a really great um, uh, adversarial uh, fight. Well done. A lot of good action to it. Great second trilogy, second movie in the trilogy. Just like Empire is my favorite out of the the uh, you know the middle trilogy, but. Uh, very good stepping stone for the rest of the series for me. What about you, Hitch? So I gave Phantom Menace a seven and I would probably give this movie a seven and a half, a little bit better. And if this were actually episode one, I probably would have a much higher grade for this because I feel like there's some missing meat to this trilogy, just like to the sequel trilogy. This, this I've, I've often told people that you could pretty much summarize all of everything that happened in episode one in the elevator conversation. We get it. That's exactly what happened. We understand the whole plot. If it weren't for the fact that Gwagon Jin's not in this movie, you pretty much don't even know, know anything that happened in episode one to know what's going on here. So mm. as a second movie, I think that there needs to be something in the middle between here and three. And the good news, I got some good news for everybody. There is a bunch of stuff <laughs> that happens <laughs> between this and episode three. Uh, one thing that I, I like a lot, you know, that diner scene that, that Ken talks about, we used uh, we used Daxter as our uh, thumbnail this week just because it's fun. Um, I was interested to see a little bit more about, like, how did Obi-Wan, like, is he just going to lunch in this place? Does he just know this dude? Or, like, is this just where all the Jedi hang out? You know how there are cop bars? Maybe there's Jedi bars, right, on Coruscant. Uh, I also I also all- liked uh, – oh, I'm sorry. Was that Ken? Yeah, no, okay. they, they knew him. He must come in there like every day. Yeah. Like every day he gets a Jedi mount and goes, you know, goes back to the temple. Uh, I really liked how, you know, I liked, I love the seismic charges, the, you know, that, that chase scene on Geonosis in the, in the ring, the ring system. Uh, I like the seismic charges. I definitely did a fist pump when we saw seismic charges in Mandalorian. Yeah, so, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, this movie, you know, I probably wouldn't have given this more than a five if I was if I would have told you what I would have said this week. Like if you'd asked me last week what I thought I was gonna do, I'd have been much lower. So for me, the rewatch was a success. I enjoyed the movie more than I had previously. That's what I'm saying with you, Hitch. Um, you're changing your tune a little bit, slightly from what um you know what we what we was doing before we even started these podcasts and stuff. So that's good to hear. It's good to see you know gaining more of perspective when you when you rewatch stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, what about you, DP? I, I pretty much said what I what I felt. I thought the movie. I, I will give it an eight. You know, as you as you did. Um, it was a fun watch again. Um, the movie looked a lot more smoother, a lot more, um, you know, the film, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the, gra- the graphics and the CG, as Kim was alluding to, um, looks a lot better against this digital than it did against film. So technology came up around that time better. Um, the complexities in Anakin and, you know, his relationship with um, Padme and just, you know, Anakin as a character, period, and the politics that, you know, George Lucas was, you know, going, um, talking about um, in this movie is a definitely, you know, really great appreciation, especially as compared to a lot of things that's going on today. So I, I was, like I said in the very beginning, he was a bit of a soothsayer, but these are timeless themes and timeless, you know, mm-hmm. events and um, characters, traits that could just really just be just put on here and, you know, on and other stuff. So um, it definitely gets an eight from me. 
I yeah, really appreciate that, DP. And as, as we said again, everybody who out there listening in the vehicles, whether you're in a car or on Spotify, Amazon, uh, you know, Apple, uh, iTunes, uh, anywhere you can even watch us for everybody on Facebook. Uh, really appreciate you guys coming along with us as, as this journey of Carbonite Bounty BS. And like I said, having these discussions, please, guys, reach out to us on all our platforms. Feedback. Um, we want to hear from you guys. We want to interact with you guys even more. But, uh, you know, as we move to next week, we are all progressing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want to get a watch in of uh, episode three, the final of the original prequel trilogy, uh, we're going to do Clone another... Wars next. Yeah, let's do Clone Wars. Yeah, we're going to do that. Clone Wars yeah, yeah. yeah, we're going to do Clone let's Wars. Let's do the Clone okay. Wars movie. I actually haven't even seen it, so this will be awesome. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll bring that in. So, yeah, we'll, we'll take a sidestep here. We'll bring it in. And then um, you said we'll have another discussion for everybody, another some talking points. So, if everybody wants to get their, um, you know, their. Their watching of this going, uh, it'd be a great point for us to, to, to bounce off again. I mean, it's for a lot of people, like you're saying, it's new, um, exciting, and it, it ties some other things into this as well. So, it, it once again, it kind of ties some um, continuum as far as how all this stuff leads into one and other. So, I, I really think, and even times of the Mandalorian, a lot of these these animated things, and uh, you know, are going to tie into more of these animated series as with you know the Felonies and, and people of the world. This a lot of this stuff that we see in the I guess we would call it a you. Would you hit? What would we consider this? Legends? Ah, uh, you mean you mean the, the old books fine. and stuff? Or yeah, I mean, well, even like some of these, like the Clone Wars, even like, what would we consider this? Would this be canon? I, mean, I guess it's I, sort I of like this, it's, 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 it's secondary canon, right? So it's like not, right. it's not like the movies, but it's the next level. I guess is probably these older okay. Lucasfilm sort of uh, cartoons. Right. That's why I feel it. Uh, That's all head yeah. canon, you know. It doesn't. It's all whatever. Whatever Disney says is actually what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> But, uh, so well, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. There's the money. Take get, his money. Take my take, money. Take the money. Take it. But, uh, yeah. Once again, guys, like I said, please, if you're listening to us, watching us, uh, smash a like on the video, or please comment and give us five star ratings on it. We will continue to keep giving you guys, you know, talking points. Keep giving you content and um, some big things in the work for the channel, and as far as all our viewers. So. Um, just working on some things behind the scenes we don't really want to discuss with you guys, but some really exciting things for the channel and the community moving forward. And uh, we'll bring you guys along this journey. And when some of these things roll out, we'll definitely be sharing it. But uh, as the guy said, please start paying attention to us on some of our other platforms because there'll be some really interesting things coming out there. And we might even give you guys some teasers of some things we're looking to do in the future. So uh, other than that, guys, without further ado, I appreciate everybody listening and tuning in. And um, this is the way. This is the way. way. Cyclopedia.